Hi everyone. I want to talk to you today about rocks and the rock cycle. As we talked about last class, there are lots of minerals on earth, but there's only you know, a couple dozen that make up rocks that are important to us in this class. Almost all rocks are made up of minerals. So I'm going to take you through the rock cycle. We're going to start out as a molten liquid. There are two types of molten liquid. There's magma, which is beneath the Earth's surface, and there's lava, which is above the Earth's surface, perhaps coming out of a volcano. If you're a molten mass of magma that's coming up deep within the Earth from, uh, from, those con from the convection cells, which we'll discuss when we get to the plate tectonic section, it's going to start cooling once it gets close to the Earth's surface, because it's cooler here than thousands of degrees where it's coming, where it's originating from. So as it gets cooler, you will start having individual minerals start solidifying, and those will eventually form rocks. And whether they're on the inside of the Earth or whether they're coming out of a volcano in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean or somewhere else where there's a volcanic island chain, it's going to be considered an igneous rock. There are two types of igneous rocks. There's intrusive, and there's extrusive. The intrusive igneous rocks are made from magma. The extrusive igneous rocks are made from lava. Now the intrusive ones, they form very slowly, so they have time for larger minerals to grow. The ones on the outside, the extrusive ones, grow very quickly, and they do not have time for large minerals to grow. Let me give you some examples. You may have heard of the rock granite, granite countertops, granite other things that we make. If you've seen a granite countertop and you look at it closely, you can see the individual minerals. They may be this big, the size of a dime. You can see minerals that you might recognize, like quartz, feldspar, and some darker colored minerals in there. Now that rock, granite, is composed of minerals big enough to see so it was formed as an intrusive igneous rock. There's also basalt, which is an extrusive igneous rock. It's the most common. It's the one that lines the ocean bottoms. It does not have time to grow large minerals. Now, if you look at that under a microscope, you can see the minerals, but you can't see it without a microscope. There are also a handful of other common igneous rocks like obsidian, a diorite. And speaking of obsidian, obsidian is this volcanic glass, a, a black blob or a red blob of glass, and it can be quite sharp. It's a, it's a really interesting rock. You also have pumice, which is the only rock that floats because it's full of these holes and vesicles and makes it light. And you also have scoria, which you've probably all seen, whether you know it or not. We use it in landscaping and in flower beds. So that's igneous rocks. These igneous rocks, whether they're intrusive or extrusive, at some point will probably become exposed at the surface. And when they become exposed to the surface, what do you think happens? Weathering. They become exposed to the sun, to the heat, to the cool, to the dry, to rain, to hell, sleet, snow, all that stuff. And it breaks them down. It can break them down rather quickly if you're in a high weathering environment. So these rocks will break down. You can start out with big boulders, and those boulders will crack over time. And you start out with large ones, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, they erode away, different pieces go here and there. And they eventually, those tiny particles, once they break up and, and are now smaller particles, they can wash away or they can blow away. They will often get deposited in the bottom of a river, the bottom of a lake, or the bottom of the ocean. And those small particles can lithify together under the right conditions, those sediments, can lithify together under the right conditions and form a sedimentary rock. Now, let me give you some examples of common sedimentary rocks. You have shell, S-H-A-L-E, which is the most common sedimentary rock, coming in about 60%. Sandstone is the second most common sedimentary rock, about 20%, and then limestone about 10%. And there are a handful of other common sedimentary rocks that we won't go into now. Shell is common in Kentucky as well. It's a rock type that does, it's, water doesn't flow through it very easily. And it's a, it's a very weak, it's a very weakly formed rock. 
So you don't see it making up big cliffs or anything like that. It just erodes away very quickly. A lot of time when you see these grassy knolls, you'll have shell underlying it, and it does erode away quite easily. In the eastern Kentucky and western Kentucky coal fields, you have the rock sandstone, and it does form cliffs because it's composed of the mineral quartz, which does not erode away very easily. And that all goes back to its geochemistry of the way it's chemically bonded. You also have the rock limestone, which is very important here in Kentucky. We have more limestone than most other states, I think it's safe to say. And limestone, it erodes away by the process of dissolution over time, and it forms caves under the right circumstances, caves and sinkholes. And this type of environment we call karst, K-A-R-S-T. Forms the biggest cave in the world, longest cave in the world, Mammoth Cave, that's over 400 miles of survey, surveyed passageways have been discovered at this time, all because of limestone. You also have coal here in Kentucky, which is an important rock, an important sedimentary rock, because of its history and because of its energy production here in the state of Kentucky. Now, those sedimentary rocks, if they get layers and layers and layers built on top of them over millions of years, what can happen to them? A number of things. You can increase the temperature, if they're down far enough or close enough to a subduction zone, or you can increase the pressure. Temperature and pressure are the most important factors in metamorphosing a sedimentary rock into a metamorphic rock. Now, there are other different types of rocks. Igneous rocks can also be metamorphosed, but as you're going around the rock cycle, generally the way we discuss it is you're going from a sedimentary rock to a metamorphic rock. There are some examples I could give you of metamorphic rocks. There are two types, first of all. There's non-foliated and there's foliated. Foliation means that you have distinct layering or banding as minerals start to grow during this process. Some examples, some non-foliated igneous rocks are quartzite, marble, and anthracite coal. Quartzite originates from the sedimentary rock sandstone. Marble originates from the sedimentary rock limestone. And anthracite coal originates from the sedimentary rock coal. In other words, bituminous coal. It's referred to as bituminous coal. The sedimentary version is. And then you have this foliated phase. The foliated series starts out as a mud rock, aka the sedimentary rock shell. And you go through grade one, which turns into slate, grade two, phyllite, grade three, schist, and the fourth phase is gneiss. Now these individual minerals at that point start to melt out again. When you increase the temperature or pressure that much, you get all the way up to a gneiss, it's really hot, or it's under a lot of pressure or stress. So those individual minerals can start to melt out again. And when that happens, it turns into either lava or magma. So what have we done here? We've gone all the way through the rock cycle. We've gone from a liquid to solid to weathering and all this other stuff back to a liquid again. So it's not a rock or a mineral anymore. That's the whole rock cycle process. Now, some rocks have gone through the rock cycle many times. Other rocks have not gone through the rock cycle hardly at all. It just depends on their situation. So I hope this segue helps between minerals and going into the Earth's crust and learning more about geology. Rocks and minerals are essential in this class. It's essential to know at least a little bit about them before moving on. So I hope this helps and hope you have a great rest of your semester. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.